Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We all hope you are enjoying the jazz party so far. And, well, uh, I don't know where Mike Gurry is, but we will convey to him the uh, information so far so good. And now we have, uh, starting uh, perhaps three minutes late, 25 minutes of Chicago clarinets beginning now. A, who were they? B, what did they play like? C, what sort of tunes did they play? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, a very difficult thing to fit into 25 minutes. And since I'm prone to talking for a long time, I must confine my mind to a narrow funnel and describe them. There are two sorts of Chicago clarinet players, two main classifications. A, the ones that migrated thither from uh, the South, New Orleans, of course, in particular, the African American clarinet players. And B, the other main class, is the ones who were not. Uh, African American and were uh, of European or white uh, extraction, but of course no perfect. But we, <laughs> do, we do the best we can. And we'd like to begin with uh, one of the, the, the younger and more famous uh, white clarinet players who had a very short career. He was killed in a car accident in 1931, Frank Teschmaker, and he had a rather spiky tone which I can't do in this man, please, but he made some very good records, one of which uh, was called uh, Obey. Clarinet players that came 
to Chicago from the south was uh, uh, Jimmy Newell, who was one of the uh, classically uh, orientated clarinet players. All the early New Orleans clarinet players had beautiful, clear, uh, limpid tone. And uh, I can't do it, but uh, Jimmy Newell could. And he, he, he had a band which played in Chicago for uh, several years, a small band. And uh, he had Earl Hines in it at one time, and Earl Hines wrote this tune, which is a Monday date. And it's in the key of C. Yes. If Keith would be so kind as to be Earl Hines, uh, and be your tempo. No Creole 
clarinet tone as well. But as the 20s went by, for some reason, which I don't know, his tone became more intense and, 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 and different, and it changed. With Jimmy Noon, Barnaby Gardner, and Simon Donald, however those guys played with pure tones all the time, dogs became more low down and intense. And fortunately, here we have the usual pianist of the uh, Kelly Stables, Lil Hardin. <laughs> and we have baby dots here on the drums, and this would be uh, Bill Johnson on the string bass. And we're going to be a nice little low down trio playing blues in the Chicago South Star. The devil's music. <laughs>
the mention of the United States military and everything that's on there, which you couldn't have achieved by all. Um, I, I've got a very fine copy of my Sir Jay collection. It actually cost me ten pounds uh, thirty years ago, so it's really not very common. Um, and then it doesn't do anything like this at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Was <laughs> uh, his first trio recording, and we have Mel Stitzel on the piano. <laughs> And the increasingly little known Bob Consulman on it. <laughs> Jim Lanigan was present in the studio, but he wasn't picked up by the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.